There are persistent inequalities in a range of human living conditions. This is very clear in the case of Bangladesh. Bangladesh lies at the end of the world's largest delta. Forty years ago, unhygienic surface water was responsible for over half of the deaths of children under five. In an effort to address this problem, UNICEF and national public health agencies supported the sinking of millions of shallow groundwater tube wells. Virtually every household now extracts water from the shallow aquifer. Tube wells were credited with halving infant mortality rates, but at the time no one realized that this would expose millions to another contaminant. Arsenic is found in the sediments deposited during the formation of the delta thousands of years ago. This is a poisoning. This is a sort of slow poisoning. They are taking the arsenic and that is deposited in the body, in the organic cells, accumulated and at level, a certain level, the symptoms come out in the body. At low concentrations the body can slowly excrete the arsenic through urine, hair, nails and skin. But at higher concentrations and after long periods of exposure it becomes chronically toxic and accumulates in the organs of the body. In a key publication in 2000, the World Health Organization asserted that between 30 and 60 percent of the total population were exposed. The crisis has been referred to as the largest mass poisoning of a population in history. There is no medical cure for this widespread poisoning. However, there are indications that antioxidants and certain compounds may help reverse it in the early stages but they must also switch to safe drinking water. In the areas where we cannot find safe wells, we have to look for alternative solutions. This alternative solution could be either deeper groundwater or treated surface water or even rainwater. The arsenic problem is not characterized by a lack of possible medical and technical solutions. The problem is one of implementation. <laughs> Most of the top-down initiatives, the technologies that they install end up in the wrong hands and not as a benefit for the whole community. Right. In light of the persistent inequalities in access to benefits and in the capacity to adopt technologies and procure medicine, a small group of researchers, doctors and practitioners, the Arsenic Mitigation and Research Foundation, set out to implement projects in several poor and arsenic-affected villages. People's involvement starts with the testing and marking of their tube wells. What did it say? Was it clear the water was free of arsenic? No, no, no. Dangerous. Dangerous. Every family has a few friends. An area will be selected based on the severity of the contamination, but also on the socio-economic conditions. So if after survey, if it fits to all the criteria, yeah. then we select that this in this village will be giving the arsenic yeah. tube well. The deep tube well has become the most popular solution, both with various organizations and with local people themselves. We sit with the villagers that we want to offer this tube well, but the conditions is like that. Number one, you have to take the responsibility of maintaining one. So for that maintenance, you will have the committee, and that committee will be elected. So if they agree to that, then third stage that will offer the land. Because that land should be leased out to the community till the tube well is there. You cannot take it back. When we drill through the upper contaminated aquifer into the lower safe aquifer, we can create short circuiting, we can create conduits, or if there is leak in the upper part of the well, there can, there can be flow of arsenic contaminated water into the wells. So it's those two objectives, provide clean drinking water on the short term and 
uh, use it as a, as a trigger to organize a committee to uh, look for longer term solutions if necessary. Our objective is not giving the DFT oil. No. It is a temporary option yes. that people will have yeah. because by not giving any water, we can cannot organize ourselves for mm. the second option or mm. empower them, as he was telling, yeah, empowering yeah. them. Amra Masha was a meeting by Shabu, Tarpore, the Kalda Polish Corporation, Narako, Tarpore, the Banke, Akaunda, Polish, Masha Masha, Tinka, Banke Zamara, Polygono, Oshuda, Takaudi, Polkita. The installation of a technology is relatively quick and easy. Organizing village elections and selecting a site are not. The unequal power relations make it very difficult for the poor to have a voice in those decisions. Since 2007, AMREF has assisted over 35 villages to make the switch from contaminated shallow tube wells to uncontaminated, community-based deep tube wells. A community-based safe drinking water supply must go hand-in-hand hand with long-term medical support for existing patients. However, medicine is expensive and consultations are time-consuming. Eventually, AMREF hopes to replace these with better nutrition or herbal medicine. We distribute seeds in every three months. Because the seeds we give, it come up, then again we give the seeds. It is one thing to reach out to the poor with water supplies and medicine, but if nothing is done to the circumstances that created the inequalities in the first place, then we haven't managed to move beyond the mere provision of charity. The social mobilization that the Arsenic Mitigation and Research Foundation is facilitating through the establishment of village committees has started to empower those that are normally marginalized from decision-making processes. Yeah. So deep tubal is an excuse of organizing them also. Yeah. So that we begin with that one. Yeah. So then let's together that then let them empower them. Yeah. Go to the government, go to the local yes. people, ask for your things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have got the right to get that one. Yeah. Already there are several positive signals of the benefits from this type of social mobilization. In Konokshar, the people's organization that slowly emerged from the deep tube well maintenance committee successfully lobbied the local government for funds to raise a road that runs through the village. This radically improved access to the deep tube well, but more importantly, the experience also strengthened the community's sense of control over their own lives. <laughs> The inequalities persist in a range of living conditions. But the most important inequality that will need to be reduced is in the power to decide over one's living conditions.